Principles are abstract guidelines which are supposed to be followed while designing a software. Usually we apply this to any programming language so that we can implement different patterns based on these blueprints. In this video, we are going to see how we can leverage these principles to define creating a cloud native design for containers. These principles are based on Red Hat's white paper on cloud native container design. We are going to see these seven different principles. I'll try to explain some of them in detail wherever necessary. Let's get started. Starting off with the simplest one, single concern principle. This principle simply dictates that every container should have or should address only a single concern and it should do it well. What this basically means is, let's say we have two different containers, container one and container two. Usually we deploy them as single pods. If you're using Kubernetes, we consider this whole deployment unit as a pod. So you have both the container one and the container two deployed together, but however, they have different code bases, they have different images underneath them. So what this particular principle states is that you should address only one particular concern or a problem statement in each of its containers. So for example, this particular kind of a pattern is generally called as sidecars. So you can definitely have a sidecar kind of a pattern for implementing reusable patterns. And also you can leverage init containers to do some things during startup. Usually we do this to combine multiple containers into a single pod where each container handles its own concern. Similarly, you can swap these containers that addresses the same concern. For example, if let's say the container two is sending logs outside this particular pod, you can replace that container two with something else which does the same kind of a job. So let me explain this with a detailed example. Let's take an example of a web server. We have a web server, an application, and also we have logging and monitoring containers. Imagine all these are individual containers which are deployed as a single pod. This is how I had previously set up my application. So my application core logic is within the app container. Logging and monitoring are different containers which are running as sidecars which are just getting the data from my application and then streaming them outside this particular pod to different systems. If I follow this SCP principle, then what the principle states is that I can remove the web server, the logging and the monitoring containers and replace them with a common particular unit or a reusable pattern. For example, I have replaced all of these with Envoy. So Envoy is a data plane which we leverage in the service mesh or a environment where you want to unify and then do some things for your application but you want to do it in a specific pattern where you don't have to change your application. So in this case, all my web proxying, my logging and monitoring is all happening via the Envoy proxy. So I can configure my Envoy to do logging, monitoring and also doing proxying requests. So the single concern principle says that if you have a container which is having its own single concern, you can easily replace that particular feature with another container. And if you look at it, this is much more scalable compared to my existing implementation because I already had separate containers which were running. They could have incurred more memory. But now I have a single container which is Envoy which is much more scalable compared to my previous container setup. Moving on to the next one. Now that we spoke about different uh, monitoring and logging options, let's discuss the high observability principle. So if you don't know what is observability, do take a look at my video on what is observability so that you can have a clear idea of what caters to observability in general. So coming to the high observability principle, the principle states that your application needs to be treated as a black box so that you can implement all the necessary APIs which the platform can observe. So generally we are talking about the container orchestration platform here so that the container orchestration platform can connect to different APIs which your application uses and understand how the application behaves. Now let me explain that with some diagrammatic representation. So let's imagine I have a container. I'm going to expose a health endpoint so that my platform or my user can know that if this particular application is alive or not. So that's when I will define a health endpoint. I can also define readiness and liveness health points so that my container platform can understand when I should be restarted or when I should be terminated or when traffic should be sent to my application. If you don't know what is readiness and liveness, I have a separate video on that. You can take a look at that. Uh, now moving on to the next one. 
So in addition to all these uh, existing health measures, we also need to publish metrics because metrics are another key aspect of the observability. So we need to expose metrics from the application which can be extracted and sent to different platforms. Again, we need to expose the logs and we need to trace these logs across microservices. So these are different API implementations which you have to consider implementing within your container so that the platform can make your application highly observable. And that's why this particular principle states that you need to have all these key metrics. You also need to log some important events into the STD error or the STD out logs because there could be different applications which can consume your STD out and STD error and then you can monitor or alert people based on those events. Let me go in depth from this diagram. So imagine I have this particular container, the same container which I have exposed all the APIs. Now I need to expose my logs and I need to get my metrics out. So I can have a sidecar which is fluent D and also I can have a monitoring agent which can take all my metrics and then push all these into a different platform. For example, I'm going to push my logs into the Splunk or a Logstash server from the Fluentd instance or the agent. And from my monitoring agent, I'm going to push data to Prometheus so that I can use Grafana to view all the metrics. So the high observability principle states that you need to implement all these API implementations so that the platform can leverage all these and use those information to collect and gather information which can be used to monitor your application in the best possible way. The next one is the lifecycle conformance principle. So usually we have different application life cycles when we start our application when we shut down our application. So same way when we start our containers we have different application principles. Now what this particular principle says is that the application should have a way to read the events coming from the platform. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, what happens if there is a server crash and how should I clean up my resources within the application? So all those can be handled using the lifecycle events. Let's take the example of a container. I have a pod. I have a container. Now, there are different system events, something like sig term and sig kill. These are events which are triggered from the Linux server where these are running. And those can be handled by the application because these servers, when they are going to go down, they emit some events and these are called as system events. These events can be directly captured and you can write these API implementation within the application. So you have all kinds of app events coming from the orchestration platform or the underlying platform, which need to be managed as a life cycle within your container. So you will have to handle sick term and sick kill. For example, sick term is a terminate message which shuts down your server as quickly as possible. Now, sick kill happens when there is a sick term and then you are forcefully shut down through a kill signal. So that's when sick kill comes into picture. When I'm trying to stop the server or the platform, then I get a sick term. And if somebody is trying to forcefully kill or shut down my machine, then I get a sick kill. Now, what will I do within the application? You can handle cleaning up of resources, maybe database connections, connecting to queue, memory management, etc. There are also pre-stop and post start events using which you can handle implementations within the application so if you ask me where you can use these events sometimes you want to warm up your application so that you are ready for serving traffic at that particular point in time you can use the post start only when there is a post start you can do some cache loading and stuff like that and once the post start is successful then your application will be up the same thing could be true for pre-stop during pre-stop you can clean up some existing resources before the application is being shut down. Hence, this particular principle helps us in cleaning the resources within the container and keeps your application safe. The next one is the image immutability principle. This principle states that any change in the container application should result in building a new container image and reusing it across all the environments. This is a classic use case of patching where generally what we try to do is before the container world, we used to try changing a jar file runtime and then go and add some classes in the class path and then load different classes and make the jar behave differently. So in the container world, this particular principle applies to the same principle where it says you cannot change your image based on your environment. So you have to use the same image which you have built. For example, here I have an app.jar with Java 17, which is a container image. Now I have to use the same container image, which is hello service version one in all the environments, dev, UAT and prod. So I cannot just like that say, I will deploy v1 into dev, 
V2 into UAT and then V3 into prod. So image immutability principle states that you have to use the same version of the image and if you need to change the image version then you have to deploy the same in all the environments. Coming to the next one, the next one is the process disposability principle. The biggest reason why we containerize our application is that containers need to be ephemeral and it needs to be started as quickly as possible so that you can replace one container with another container at any point in time. So what this basically means is I can spin up new containers at any point in time. I don't have to wait for any process specific startups or any sequence in which I need to start my services. Now usually what happens, the platform usually tries to kill your application based on the health check. It tries to scale down your application or it tries to scale up your application. Also it might migrate your container from one host to another. All these are platform specific changes which the platform can do based on an issue or a resource starvation. So what used to happen is your application can go down and then come up at any point in time. So there is possibility that your process could be disposed at any point in time. So your containerized application should maintain the state which should be externalized. And also your application should be distributed that way you can easily scale and it is running in different machines so that you have resiliency handled. It also helps the application to quickly start up and also shut down even if there is any complete hardware failure. So even if one machine goes down, you have the possibility of bringing that in the other machine because your application doesn't have a hard dependency on that particular machine because everything is just externalized. So there is no state maintained in the application. You don't have anything stored within the file system, etc. The sixth one is the self-containment principle. Self-containment principle states that a container should contain everything it needs at the build time. Now what do I mean by that? If let's say I have a container which is app.jar, I have Java 17 with it. Now I do have configurations, I do have storage which are required for my application to run. However, during the build time, I have to worry only about the container. During the build time, I need my app.jar and the Java 17 and I need them. And during my run time, I will require my configuration and the storage in addition to my container. Usually these kind of things happen when let's say there is a Linux library which is required for my application or many hardcore libraries within the container which I need. In our case we needed Java 17 for our application to run so Java 17 is used during the build time itself and the same is used during the runtime. I cannot change the version of the Java or the underlying dependencies within my machine which I have used during build time. Same way during the runtime I can leverage the platform specific configurations for example, in Kubernetes, you can use configs and the storage volumes so that you can attach and detach them to the container during the runtimes. The last and the final principle is the runtime confinement principle. This principle says that every container needs to declare its own resources and its requirements so that it needs to be passed to the platform which on which it is running on. A classic example is when I start my container, I need to provide what is my resource limit on how much my system will be starting up with. Now let's say I want to start up my container which is a Java application with 2 gig of memory then I have to pass that particular 2 gig option during my startup time. So what we can do here is we can represent containers as a three-dimensional model and within the container we have the app and the runtime for that particular application. I'm going to use memory for the x-axis, the container size for the y-axis and the CPU resources for the z-axis. So in order to create a container you need all these three different configurations which you require during the runtime and you have to confine with a specified limit. You have to mention these resource requirements during the application startup. So that way the platform understands that this particular application needs 10 gig of memory or 2 gig of memory so that you can get rid of termination of migrating your application due to resource starvation. Because what happens is, let's say your application is running with 2 gig of memory on a server which already is full of applications. And now suddenly your application needs more memory. Now what happens? Your application crashes and it gets reassigned to another host. Now if your application had already defined that it needs more memory, then you could have already assigned it to a different host. So these kind of resource starvation will try to make your application unstable and it might get crashed and then started every now and then based on the memory usage. It also hinders in the performance with respect to auto scaling and also capacity management. This degrades your service level agreements or the SLAs 
which are defined for your application. So runtime confinement is one of the key measure where you have to define all these parameters during the startup time. So you can define your memory, CPU and your container size during the startup time. To conclude, cloud native is more than just an end state. It's a way of working and improving your application by following predefined principles and patterns so that you can create a much mature and a cloud native container landscape. The Red Hat's white paper, which we just saw, described different principles that represent the foundational guideline of containerizing your application and making it a good cloud native citizen. I hope you found this particular video interesting. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.